In Afghanistan, I born in a very educated family. My, my mother was teacher, my father was engineer, and um, we had a very comfortable life in Afghanistan. And uh, something which happened, my life changed and uh, I became a refugee. In my country, in fact, we, we, just, we don't only have the problem of Taliban or Al-Qaeda or ISIS, that um, we also have the problem of some mafia and kidnapper groups that they are uh, kidnapping the people, uh, especially those who are rich, who have very comfortable life, they have money. They're kidnapping their son and then uh, they're asking for money from them to send them money. And if they don't send money, so they are cutting the ears and cutting the fingers of those and sending to family and force them to, uh, to, to send money for them. Uh, the kidnappers kidnapped me and uh, I was almost four months or five months or their, their jail. And uh, they was beating me and they was uh, recording the video of my beating and they was sending to family, my family to, to send money. And they was asking about uh, very um, huge money. We, we didn't have that much money. It was something which happened when I was in their jail. And uh, there was a very small window in the top. So on that night, uh, every night they was coming and give, opening my hand. And they was uh, giving me food and letting me to go to, to use the, the, the toilet. So on that night, they forgot to close my hand and I was pretending that my hand is closed in my back. Uh, so they went out from my room and they closed the door. And it was a good opportunity for me to jump to, through the window. And it was a very small window. And uh, I know that this was kind of miracle. Uh, God uh, helped me on that case. And that just I uh, entered myself through the window. And also it was two floors down the window. And uh, I fall down to the hurt, and uh, so fortunately I fall down with leg, and also I was feeling uh, pain in my leg, and uh, so I just keep running from their place that they was there, and after about 100 meters, 200 meters, there was road, street, there was many cars passing, and I ar arrived myself there, and I stopped a car. It was a taxi, so I was totally bloody. They was beating me, and uh, even the taxi driver became very scared and said, what happened with you? So I said, please uh, bring me as soon as possible to the nearest security or the police office, which is in this area. So when I entered there, they knew that, um, that I had been kidnapped because my father was reporting to, uh, to police, to everywhere. And uh, so they asked me if you can bring us to the place that they have been kidnapped you, so uh, we, we need to arrest them. Uh, I helped them to bring them there and uh, to show them the place. And they uh, just covered the house and they wanted to arrest them, but they didn't want to arrest. They start fighting with, this, with that security and uh, so they killed about three of them and two of them has been arrested and many of them which was outside they knew that it happened in that house, they skipped. Uh, so I could just come back home and everyone was happy, my mother, my father. I had also two small sisters and two brothers. They was all happy, we were celebrating. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking that it was the end of the problem, the problem finished. But in fact, it was not because they came to revenge. Uh, so my father knew that they, they will do something wrong with us, so we just uh, moved uh, from that house we, to another place. We rent another place, at least to be safe. Um, so my mother also had a heart attack, and always, uh, sometimes when the heart attack, she was sick, we was bringing her to the hospital. So one night my father was with her, another night I was with her, and my father was with uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, so that night when I was with my mother in the hospital, uh, those uh, groups, they found my place and uh, they just came to my home and they shoot everyone which was in my home. Everyone was sleeping during the... Uh, when they was sleeping, they killed my two sisters and two brothers. 
so it was daytime in the morning. Um, my neighbors came to the hospital and they said this news to me. So the doctors didn't allow me to tell this to my mother because my mother had a heart attack. It was not good to say this, which happened in your home. Uh, so when my mother a little bit became fine, I told her that it happened. Uh, on that moment, it was one of my saddest and very bad and moment of my life that I have been um, I, uh, that I have been um, was on that moment. Just uh, one of my friend, which was school friend, he was my classmate. So he invited me to his place. It was out of Kabul. This place and we went there and about um, uh, six and seven months we stayed there and then my mother asked me that how long we should stay hide in this place and to do not go outside at least you study it you have some knowledge and so you you have to go to to Europe and uh, find a better life and then you can invite me and I will also be healed for the uh, problem of heart attack uh, I didn't want to leave my mother because uh, it was very. Uh, my mother was totally alone, and I didn't want it because also she was sick. So she forced me that you have to go because you have to find a life somewhere. So my first uh, country when I arrived was Norway. So when I arrived to Norway, uh, on that time there was some Aden agreement between Afghanistan and Norway governor to, to send back all refugees to Afghanistan. So after four years, I thought Norway is very useless if I stay as long as it's not possible to get the documents here. And also my mother was alone in Afghanistan. I needed to invite her. But uh, on that moment, Italy was the only country that there was, uh, you, you had that chance to appeal and to ask for asylum. That's why I came to Italy and uh, I asked for asylum here. Uh, after six months when I was in Italy, also my mother died and now um, I'm in Italy now and uh, I have five years protection. Um, my experience in Italy was uh, almost one year and two months I had place in a center to stay. But after that they told me that uh, your time is finished and you have to go and rent a place or find a place for yourself. So for about four months and five months I was homeless and I was walking around. It was very difficult moments of my life. I was pretending myself very alone. No families, no friends, no one was listening, no one was listening to me. I was going to the parks, I was crying with talking with the trees and like a crazy. I was just imagining that I'm going to be crazy here. Fortunately, I found this uh, Jail Nifuma Refugee Center and uh, when I came here, I found very, very kind people. They really helped me. They really helped me. There was psychologists and they start, uh, every day they start meeting with me and they was giving me hope. They was giving me many advices to be hopeful for the future. At least maybe God has some plan for you. So they introduced me with the artisan group. Now I'm part of the JNRC artisan group. I'm working there. And uh, all of them are like brothers and sisters. We are eating together. We are working together. And uh, it's very, very nice place for me here. And now I don't feel myself alone. I, I feel that I have a good family. God gives me another family here. Uh, my life really changed because of the center. So when I was in Afghanistan, when I was uh, studying uh, psychology, uh, my hope was to be a psychologist or to be a writer or to be many, many, I had many hopes and many dreams about future. But for now, uh, my only dream is that, that I don't want to be a refugee forever. 